All right, so we have a fun problem to look at here, which is looking at a regular language, which we're gonna call L right here. So L is just some arbitrary regular language. We don't know what the alphabet is or whether it's finite or infinite. We know that L prime is a different language, which is finite. So it's just a finite language. And again, it could have any number of strings in it, zero or more, as long as it's a finite number. And what we're going to look at is a set S, which is gonna be the set of all strings that are in the language L, so the regular language L, such that there isn't any element of this finite language, the L prime language, that's a substring of w so there's no possibility of any element of l prime being a substring a direct substring of the of any string in l but we're going to have the extra condition that there is some string in l prime where x is a subsequence of w so so substring is basically we have um, something that goes before and then the substring x1 through xn right there all in a row. So x1 through xn here is contiguous. Contiguous. And where subsequence is exactly like a substring, but the the x1, x2, up to xn don't have to be identical to it, uh, don't have to be adjacent to each other. So it could be x1, and then some point later is x2, then x3, and then later xn. So they don't have to be adjacent to each other. They could be if they want to, but they don't have to be. So that's the problem that we uh, that's the language S that we have, and we want to show that S is regular, and we have no idea what L is, we have no idea what L prime is, other than the fact that L is regular, L prime is finite, and we form S in this way. Okay, so how do we show that S is regular? Well, we notice here that we have two conditions we have to meet for S. So we have to so S is all the strings where conditions one satisfied and condition two satisfied. So in a sense, if we can show that one is regular and two is regular, well, if we have both of those, then that means that S is just the intersection of the two. So because if I do show that uh, that one is regular and two is regular, then the intersection of the two must be regular, which is S. So that means that S is regular. So what we want to do is to show that one is regular and two is regular. So let's show that one is regular. So if you recall, re the condition one says that we want to get all the strings that are not a sub that don't contain any element of L prime as a substring. So let's just write that here. So, so all strings in L, the original language, such that no string in L prime, the finite language, is a substring of any W in L. So we want to make sure we want to get everything in L such that there's no, uh, no string in L prime that is a substring of any W in L. Well, the exact opposite question, so the opposite question is all strings in L such that, um, that, are a that contain some element of L prime as a substring. So all strings in L such that exists some W prime in L prime that is a substring 
of some W and L. So that's the opposite question. Well, that's just the complement language with respect to L prime. Um, but what we can do here is say, well, how do we form this? Well, what we can do here is just say, well, all the strings that are that contain some string in L prime at all, not just the ones in L, but the ones in L prime, um, it could be any string, is, well, anything could appear before the substring itself, and then here is the substring in L prime, and then anything can appear after. Well, to model that, well, that's just sigma star L prime sigma star. And this thing is a regex. Why is it a regex? Because L prime is finite and sigma star is regular. And because these, this is a concatenation of sigma star, L prime, and sigma star, this must be a regex. But what we want is the complement of this. So let's just say I call this S of L prime. Well, then what we want is S of L prime complement. So this is all strings in sigma star that contain something in L prime as a substring. So that's the language of all strings, not just the ones in L, but the ones in sigma star, it could be any string that contains something in L prime somewhere. And if we wanted the ones that are in L also, well, so uh, here what we want all strings in L with this property. Well, that is just L intersection with the language we just made. Because we just want, we want the strings in L and are in this set that we just made. Well, we know this is regular by assumption. Well, this is regular because we just made a regex. We made a regex for the original and closure under complement shows that this S of L prime complement is regular. So this is regular by closure under intersection. Okay, so then how do we get the second one? So two is regular. So what this is, so all strings in L such that um, they have some member, some string in L prime as a subsequence. So how do we actually do that? Well, let's just say that we have w1, w2, up to wn, some string in L prime. Well, in the subsequence part of it, well, anything could appear before w1, and anything could appear between w1 and w2 because it's a subsequence. So we have anything could appear in between, then anything between w2 and w3, etc., up to wn, and of course anything could appear after. And well, how can we model this? Well, this is just sigma star w1, sigma star w2, sigma star w3, sigma star, etc., and then sigma stars around the last one, wn. And this is a regex for all strings that contain w1, w2, up to wn 
as a subsequence. Okay, so we know how to get exactly one string by just putting sigma stars in between everything. But the question here is, well, can this work, can this idea work for all of L prime? Well, the question is no if L prime was infinite because then we would have to make infinitely many regexes in this way. But because L prime is finite, we can do this for all W in L prime just by unioning all of them. So this only works because L prime is finite. Pretty cool. So how does that, so how does this work here? Well, suppose that the final regex is R, which is the union of R W1, union R W2, etc., up to R W S, where W1, W2, up to W S is the language L prime. So I, I'm naming L prime the strings in L prime to be W1 through W S here. And I'm forming the regex for each one of them as we did before. And I union all of them. So if the final regex is R, well, what is the language that we want? So the language that we want is, well, the regex we have here is for all strings, not just the ones in L. So the ones we want are the ones that are in L and the ones that R can make. So the language we want is L of R, which is the language of R, the set of strings that it makes, intersection with L. And so, well, we know that, so I better switch to red here, this is regular by assumption, and this is regular because it's a regex. And again, by closure under intersection, this gives us a regular language. And this was everything we wanted to show because recall, that we wanted to show that one is regular and two is regular. And since we showed both of them are regular, the language that we want, is, which is this one, is actually regular. So I hope that was interesting. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.